Okay, so welcome to the Sunday Shop Update. I'm going to talk a little bit about routers and router templates. I'm not, this is not going to be a technical run through of these two machines. There's some brilliant ones on YouTube, as I'm sure you know. I'll just take you through why I picked that and then a little bit on templating. So on this project here, I was actually able to do this in one pass. This was a test piece, but 25 mil was what I needed, which is incredible. It's almost like using a spindle molder. So I'm really pleased with that. I also needed uh, the other reason I went for the 2200 is I needed an 80 mil plunge to put these in. And that is exactly what you need almost to the mill. It's about 79 mil using a bit like this to put your lock in. So the 70 mil on the 1400 wouldn't have been enough. And I think I'm gonna find myself still using the 101 more. So that was kind of the reasoning behind it. Uh, now, unfortunately, when you do buy one of these, um, you are gonna need the box of accessories and that is where the price becomes a killer. Now, I bought this on a really good offer at Screwfix in the UK. Um, I got a bit lucky with a discount offer. So I bought that quite cheaply. And then I found this used kit on eBay for 140 quid. It's not had much, the box looks a bit tatty, but it's not had much use at all. I actually think you do need this kit if you want to make the most of your 2200 because there's lots of things. For instance, if you're going to use it with your rail, which I will, this has a rail offset here. It does not have the little drop down um, offset which you use when you're using a rail like this does on the 1400. So I think getting the extra kit is pretty important and it does bump the price right up. But if you get a second hand one like me, 140 quid, bargain. I love using this and this uh, 110 and with the 8mm bit you can get some really good bit spiral cutters 12.5mm large rebates like this so for me I've not found any problem with power uh, I find it easy to handle and I just like this all over so this is my kind of number one router I've got to be honest um, but I was doing some very large rebates for a door when I did my oak door, I used one of these in my Trend router, which is, I think it's 12.7 and a half inch. And then I did discover, which is really good from Trend. It's not their pro one, unfortunately, but that's all they make. They do an eight mil shaft um, with the same. So we can now get the 12.7 rebate with a tiny bearing. You'll get, I think it's about 13 mil, which is the same as these ones uh, with the small bearing. Uh, but this door that I was making, I got away with that with the oak door, but this Oroco door, I don't really like working with Oroco anyway, but this door needed a big rebate. And I come across this uh, from Router Cutters UK. This is a white side, um, yeah, white side bit, and it is massive. I mean, you give an idea of what I would normally be using is this. And this thing is massive. And I started thinking, well, if I'm gonna be putting great big bits in like that, I might as well go for a solid machine, which has got a bit of weight to it and really good dust collection. And I've got to be honest, I'll show you a clip of using this on a rebate. The dust collection is awesome. This will cut a massive depth in one hit of 25 mil deep and up to 19.5 uh, width, uh, which is quite incredible. I actually didn't need that width just for some glazing, but it just means that on a, on a project, you're not going down making small cuts like this and taking your time because if you do go down this way you get to the point where you can't cut any deeper if for some reason the glazing unit is too tight or something's moved you've got no way to adjust the depth of rebate using one of these because the only reference is the bearing and the bearing is all the way down here now so there's no way to adjust it whereas coming across these really large bits you can simply reference off that point there up to a 20, about 26, 27 mil cut, which is all I needed was 25, and just swap out the bearing and then you can adjust the depth of your rebate after you've finished, if you find that something's pinching or it's a bit tight. I'll just show you a clip of this Sirocco door that I was working on and this large rebate, and I'll point out with some text what happens halfway through. So I'm using, um, using this fitting underneath obviously that won't go around the tight corners which is a pain so i'm using this fitting with a dust extraction on this bit and what happens is the oroco blocks 
of this pipe here. It completely fills it. I've got to be honest, the Oroco was really waxy working with it. I've not enjoyed it at all. But anyway, blocks this pipe and you can see at the point what happens when it blocks this pipe. And it just shows you how good the dust extraction is with this when you're doing really deep rebates. So originally I was quite worried about the size and the weight of this thing, but I've got to be honest, with the dust extraction, the size of the base, and using these really big cutters, uh, I've got and the extra plunge. I'm really happy with it and I think it's perfect. And I made an oak door for my workshop recently a couple of videos ago and went back to using a hammer and chisel on cutting the locks in and I found it really tedious, um, slow and tedious, and I just thought I need to spend the time on the next project and just make a template for a standard lock, which I did. I'll show you how I did that. And then I thought to make it a bit easier, I did this template, which I'll show you where it's all lined up. So this will cut, cut the face plate uh, cover and the latch itself in one go, saving you have to realign it. So it's quite really quick anyway and just a simple one of those for the door frame. Now I don't actually have a Festool template maker or the template jig. What I have is an old trend one and the problem is I would really like to get one of the, the um, Festool ones because I think they're probably better because they're a wider base and they can go to zero. This has got a minimum size. So what I ended up doing, which you'll see in the videos, is I ended up using the um, 30 mil ring so you didn't get much movement. Cutting that into some MDF and then moving that over to here and then using this cutter to cut the final in the template. So that helped to reduce it. So if you see me switching from the big uh, 2200 to the, um, the 110, this is why. So I'm actually kind of making a template for a template and then transfer that to my final piece. Okay, then it's just going to be a few test cuts to see how accurate that is.
that's it for this week's Sunday Shop Update. I hope you found that interesting. Uh, just to summarise, I absolutely love this machine. I think I made the right choice. I was worried about the size of it, but using it with these massive bits and um, levelling bits that I'm going to be using, the router sleds, I think it is the right machine for the job. And actually the weight and size helps you use it and helps you keep it under control. Um, so thanks so much for watching as always. Thanks to all my supporters and my Patreons, really brilliant. Uh, if you want to stick around for the end of this video, um, there's a virtually real-time use of the jig now that it's all calibrated and set up on the Oroco door. Just for the sake of keeping it interesting, I've just um, chopped out some of the time it takes doing the plunges, but it is a virtual real-time fit uh, using a uh, the jig with the tumbler lock system. Thanks again, see you on the next one.